Hey everyone, my name is Joel Hansen. A lot of people call me a professional eater, but I just like to think of myself as a guy who gets his money who's worth at buffets, who would make your Italian grandmother very, very happy, and may or may not have eaten some of the world's biggest food items. A very common question I get is, well, is this healthy to do so? And of course the answer is, no, I would never encourage anybody to do it, and I still don't to this day encourage the behavior. But how unhealthy is it? And that's what we're going to investigate today. So of course, we can look at the outside, but when we have blood work, we can also look on the inside. So let's dive in, and let's actually see what my body looks like, how I'm looking, and am I healthy? So the areas that we're going to look on my blood work are going to be those which are ultimately related to diseases which have strong dietary ties and or factors. Of course, it is very important to know there are very strong genetic factors that are at play. In fact, your genetic predisposition to having these conditions may be as high as 70% and the dietary factors may be as low as about 30%. That being said, it is a complete package and if you have a tangible or a changeable 30%, that's still pretty significant. So to start, we're gonna look at overall vitals. Yes, that's right. So we're gonna talk about my resting heart rate, my blood pressure, and just a few other kind of hematological or blood work indicators, which may be interesting, like anemia, iron store. We're gonna look at indicators which might suggest kidney disease or kidney injuries or renal issues. We're then gonna look at factors which may contribute to cardiovascular disease, such as heart attacks, atherosclerosis, which is the hardening of your arteries, high cholesterol, etc. Then we're going to have a look at indicators of liver function. So the liver does everything. The liver essentially purifies your body and you definitely don't want liver injuries, uh, you know, whether it be sclerosis, elevated liver enzyme, etc. So then we're going to look at indicators of diabetes and or a few other kind of general endocrine or hormonal indicators. Diabetes is technically a disease of the endocrine system. However, that being said, it's so multifactored and uh, I think it deserves its own section because in this blood work, that's where things get interesting. Let's just say, I'm not really looking forward to talking about that point right there. So definitely don't miss that. And then lastly, like I said, we'll look at just a few other kind of interesting hormonal indicators um, of the endocrine system, which is essentially your hormonal system that are worth mentioning for this sake, which are gonna include like thyroid function, thyroid hormone, uh, my testosterone, etc. So what makes this better is I do have blood work from 2019 and blood work from 2020. This way will allow us to better compare the results, maybe understand my norms for my bodily function, and although I don't have the exact same tests on both years, uh, it'll help just give a better insight into what we actually have. So looking at my vitals, let's first start with blood pressure because blood pressure is a pretty good indicator and it's very easy to ultimately get your blood pressure. So my blood pressure from my November 2020 visit, which that's what we'll stick with today most recently, um, was about 106 over about 58 or 60. Um, so that would be seen as a low, lower, blood pressure, but that's very normal for myself. Since my early teenage years, I have always been pulling low 100s over low over level 50s or 60s. Um, what is seen as the upper threshold of a normal blood pressure is about 120 over 80. So I don't have high blood pressure. I haven't for years. Luckily, that has not changed. And we can look at heart rate. So the average heart rate of an individual or medically is about 60 to 100 with 60 being quite low. So from my November 2020 visit, after two readings in the 50s, the lady pulled a third reading in the 70s. So that might seem very low to have my heart rate in the 50s. That being said, for again, a couple of years now, my heart rate being in the 50s and or 60s is very normal for myself. So again, she did it three times. So whether it be a mechanical error, you know, an instrumental error, um, an issue with the nurse herself, um, it would kind of make sense that probably my heart rate was about in the 50s. And then, you know, after all this hustle bustle, her not believing it was in the 50s and getting, you know, a little frantic or whatever, doing it a third time, that my heart rate probably rose up into the 70s. So you can use that as your discretion, take what you will. But a number of years now, I've been pulling heart rates in the 50s, and that's just normal for myself, which is definitely seen again quite low. The only other real thing, which is kind of interesting, I'll call it like general hematology, you know, whatever, is um, we'll look at my ferritin. This is now from 2019. Uh, that being said, I didn't get it repeated in 2020, which my ferritin, which is an indicator of like your blood or your iron, st your iron status in your body, um, relates to like anemia, it looks good. So I don't have anemia, I wouldn't expect me to, I eat a lot of red meat and I luckily don't have anemia. 
All right, this is where things are gonna get a little more interesting. So going into kidney and or renal function, which would be indicators of kidney disease, um, kidney injury, et cetera. So looking at my 2019 blood work. So we're gonna start with sodium and potassium. In 2019, my sodium was a 144. That is within the normal range of a 136 to 146 millimoles per liter. That being said, it is a little bit on the higher end of that 146 uh, upper threshold. That being said, I do consume a lot, a lot of sodium in my diet. I'm talking a lot, like grams a day. Just what I do, don't encourage it, that's just what I do. So while in 2019, I remember seeing that number and being like, hmm, not sure how I ultimately feel about that. Um, if we turn over to our, my 2020 blood work, interestingly enough, my blood sodium again was a 143 millimoles. So still within that normal range, but perhaps after having these two times, maybe that's just where my body likes to keep it. Again, I still consume a very high sodium diet. Could I probably drop that a little bit if I consume less sodium? Potentially. But sodium is something that your body likes to regulate very closely because it, does a, it deals a lot with muscle contraction. So sodium, I am in the normal range. It is kind of on the upper end of the normal range, but still well within the normal range. And in my opinion, no need for concern. Example of where you could have an elevated blood sodium, although there'd be many factors, is if you did have kidney disease or kidney issues and your kidneys were not able to excrete the excess sodium, right? Just the same as potassium, that's where you may see higher numbers. So looking at potassium, my potassium in 2019 was a 4.7 millimoles per liter and in 2020 was a 4.8 millimoles per liter, both well within the range of the 3.7 to 5.4 normal range. If you do have high potassium, that can be very, very dangerous. Definitely get that looked at, but I don't have high potassium. If you look at my chloride again, something you would look at if you had an impaired kidney function. Um, in 2019, my chloride was a 106 millimoles per liter. And ultimately, I actually did not get that repeated in 2020. In 2019 now, it is a 106 within the normal range of the 95 to 108. As I said, I consume a very high sodium diet, which is sodium chloride. So even though it is at the higher range, matching kind of my sodium, it's still not room for concern. And like I said, unfortunately, I did not get it in the 2020 blood work to compare but I would assume it's still probably with that sodium, kind of in the higher range there, but still within a normal value. The kidney and renal function, we're looking okay. So now let's look at the cardiovascular markers. These could be indicators of things like heart attacks, um, potentially high blood pressure led through atherosclerosis, so the hardening, and hardening of those arteries, high cholesterol, etc. So if we go to my 2019 blood work, fortunately, I did not get any cholesterol indicators. In fact, I really don't have anything in my 2019 which would be an indicator of cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular health. That being said, we do in 2020. So turning to 2020 blood work, what we see is my overall cholesterol. So you have your kind of good cholesterol, we call it HDL. We have our kind of more bad cholesterol, we call it LDL. Um, my total cholesterol is a 3.69, which is under the desired 5.20. Overall cholesterol looks good. It's not very high, it's in well normal range, healthy. If we look at my blood triglycerides, so this is actually the amount of fat you have transitioning through your blood at a given time. Pretty interesting stuff. So my blood triglycerides were a 0.47 millimoles per liter. That is well under the recommended 1.7 millimoles per liter. And again, in this case, like that's good. Like, you know, there are certain things you don't wanna be really, really low on, but in regards, I don't have high blood triglycerides to make a long story short, that's a good thing. When we look at my good cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, I have a 1.40 millimoles per liter, and the recommendation for a male of my age would be greater than one millimole per liter. So my HDL cholesterol, this is something we want high, and it is looking pretty dang good. To be honest, 1.4, totally cool with that number. It looks pretty healthy, and I'm very thankful for that. When it comes to my LDL cholesterol, so this is the bad cholesterol. So this needs a little bit more interpretation. Um, that being said, so my LDL cholesterol came in at a 2.07, and that is a millimoles per liter, which is still under the desired ranges in te uh, technicality. However, that being said, um, you're in a lab test, your LDL will appear lower than normal if you're fasting for 10 hours, and I was fasted for this blood work. 
So that's when we're gonna look at the non-HDL cholesterol calculation. Um, so this is kind of a test, which again is more accurate in telling kind of your LDL, or again, your non-HDL, your non-healthy cholesterol, if you've been fasting for over, over 10 hours, which I was. So looking at that, and my non-HDL cholesterol came in at a 2.29 millimoles per liter, which is good because we want it under 3.37 millimoles per liter. So my good cholesterol is pretty high. My bad cholesterol is very low. So my cholesterol looks good. And these are good indicators, same as my triglycerides. Um, so this shows that when it comes to cardiovascular health, um, these indicators, well, on paper at least, would not suggest that I am at an increased risk of said heart conditions. So now let's move on to liver function because liver is very, very important. So in both 2019 and 2020, I did get ALT, which is a liver enzyme essentially. So we'll look at ALT really quick, which is a liver enzyme. Now this is something you wouldn't want elevated. Your liver enzymes are up. It may indicate a bit of uh, liver stress and or injury. So in 2019, my ALT was a 26. In 2020, my ALT was a uh, 24, and both were under the uh, desired number. We wanted under a 46. So in both cases, it looks like my liver, again, only based on that one enzyme, is functioning a-okay. So at this point, my kidneys are looking pretty good. No strong indicators that I would have kidney issues. My cardiovascular health looking pretty good. No strong indicators that I'd be having issues. And my liver is looking pretty good as well. Again, no uh, suggestion for need of concern. Now let's go to the diabetes component and or blood sugars is a big portion of it. This is where it gets very, very interesting guys. So I do have some markers in 2019 and 2020. So let's have a look at both of those um, very closely. So in 2019, I got a fasting glucose reading. Essentially, when they took my blood, they said, how much sugar is in your blood at that very moment? So at that time, I had a 4.7 millimoles per liter, which is normal, very normal. The reference range for a kind of normal fasting glucose is 3.6 to 6 millimoles per liter. So I was right in the middle. I looked good. That was healthy. So 2019 fasting blood glucose, blood glucose, blood sugar looking good. In 2020, pulled my blood out of my arm. They looked at my, again, fasting plasma glucose again. The result was a 4.7. So actually the exact same as the year prior. So my fasting blood glucose seems to be very stable. My body obviously appears to like it at about a 4.7, and I've been able to maintain that number over the years, being within that normal range. Unfortunately, what I don't have in my 2019, but I do have in my 2020, is a hemoglobin HbA1c, or hemoglobin A1c, HbA1c for short. And this is kind of the long term. This is a, a not just a snapshot, right? Like the fasting blood glucose. That's the exact amount of sugar in my blood at the exact time of extraction. But this HbA1c looks at your blood sugar over about three to four months. So it gives you a better picture of what your blood glucose has looked like over the last three kind of four months based on the level or the, the length of the life of a red blood cell. So again, unfortunately, I don't have a reference for the 2019 numbers, but I have one for 2020. And of course, I will use this as a reference going forward. So for my HbA1c, it came in at a 5.1. So while this is still under a 6.0, which would essentially be considered a non-diabetic individual, I probably would have liked to see this under a five. So what this actually means, so this means that over the three to four months prior to November, I had times when my blood sugar was definitely quite a bit high. It was quite high. It was higher than I would have liked. But obviously, overall, it wasn't too crazy in the three to four months. Like it was quite balanced out. So now if I look at exactly what I did in the three to four months prior to November, well, I completed probably about 50 food challenges between August in November. So three to four months, let's say August, September, October, November. So I did 50 some food challenges, other kind of buffet videos, etc., and whatnot. So in all reality, I can actually like really rationalize that number. Now, by all means, I don't like the number. I don't like that it's a 5.1. I would have liked it to be a 4.9 or a five or a little bit lower. I would have liked it under a five, but I can kind of understand. So looking back, September was crazy. I did so much eating there. 
October, I did quite a bit of dang eating there. August, I did some eating there. So again, 5.1 in all reality for what I know I did was pretty dang good. I'm very, very thankful. But now it is a number that I'm going to continue to watch going forward because that is something of potential concern. I don't have a family, a strong family history of diabetes or anything. But that being said, I, it is something I'm going to watch for and I do want to take care of my health. So we will find out in the future what ultimately is going to happen. A few other kind of interesting endocrine markers um, that I have both from 2019 and 2020. Let's look at my TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. This has to do with your thyroid, which ultimately actually does quite a bit with your metabolism. In 2019, my thyroid stimulating hormone was a 1.58. Um, which is within the normal range. It doesn't seem very high to me though, to be honest. The normal range is again being 0.35 to a five, um, but it is what it is and it, it's there and it's all good, still within the normal range, so that's cool. I don't have hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Then my TSH in 2020 was a 1.32. So, I mean, in all reality, Yes, there's a little bit of difference. It's kind of ish around the same. So that just must be my body's kind of normal-ish range. So again, that has to do with your thyroid, which deals with your metabolism as well as many other things. And the last interesting note, this is just interesting for myself. I got this done. Um, so my testosterone, and this would be uh, essentially my free testosterone, you could say. So this is the amount of testosterone that is circulating in your body, uh, which is more or less available to tissues. So I got it done in 2019 and I got it done in 2020. Very interesting, I will say. Very, very, very interesting. So in 2019, um, I lost quite a bit of muscle. Uh, a lot of it just due to constant dieting. What a lot of people don't realize, a lot of people ask me, they're like, how do you, you know, not gain weight? Which I do, I totally gain weight. I gain weight, people, all the freaking time. I don't know why people don't, they just, I'll put, I'll put it they just don't see it every day like I do. They don't see it in totality, right? But I worked very hard to keep that weight off. So it involves a lot, a lot of dieting. So while I've lost a lot of muscle over the years, um, and it looks like I've actually probably negatively impacted some of my hormones, which, which, which would make sense. You know, uh, for example, testosterone can be related to kind of where you are in like caloric status. So in 2019, um, when I got my blood work done, this was September 2019, my testosterone was a 355, um, and there's a picomol per liter, um, which it is within the normal range, but the normal range for that is a 196 to a 636. So it's actually like midpoint or halfway, which is not great. I remember seeing the number being like, okay, well, it is what it is. Um, then to go to my 2020 numbers, which this is a little more interesting. The unfortunate thing is this is in nanomoles per liter. Um, so it's not even in the same uh, unit, but 2020, um, I am a 27.7 nanomoles per liter, and that is on the higher end of the range, um, which the normal range would be a 7.6 to a 31.4, which that makes me feel better about it. And it is interesting, because if I look at the timing, again, at the time of 2019, I would have been doing a lot of dieting, I would have been in a strong caloric deficit. In November, when I got this blood work, I was really in a caloric, a small caloric surplus. From about the mid-October, to essentially the end of November. I was in a uh, caloric surplus, a small caloric surplus, um, just trying to gain some of my size back. I was able to go to the gym quite regularly, and you know, I was very much enjoying that. So yeah, it kind of just goes to show, I think that diet really does play a factor in different hormones, because um, otherwise I have no reason why my testosterone would go up, but I'm okay with that. So yeah, I guess your hormones can fluctuate, do what you do. Anyway, overall guys, I hope that was informative. I hope you now understand um, what I look like not only on the outside, but on the inside. So yeah, overall, health-wise, we're doing pretty good. I'm very thankful. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you, whoever you want to. But I take it day by day. Um, I love life. I'm so appreciative for everything I have. And thank you for my thankful for my health. So that everybody, stay happy, stay healthy, stay hungry. Yes, guys, I'm serious. I'm all about being happy, healthy, and hungry. Complete package. Hence, this stuff, monitor your health, guys. Don't neglect yourself. You only have one life to live. You only have one body. I love you. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. I am so blessed. And uh, that's it, guys. Spread the love. Spread the positivity. I love you. I accept you just as you are. I love that you accept me, guys. And that's it. Let's be in this together. Let's continue to grow, develop, become the best versions of yourself we can be. And that's about it. Until next time, guys. Just have a lovely day. That's it. Have a lovely life.
be happy, be peaceful. Know you're loved, you're appreciated. That's it, guys. Until next time. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you click my face right here, you can subscribe. Yes, that's right. Click my face, subscribe, guys. It helps me out. It helps you out. Then you don't miss an upload. And hopefully, I can meet you when I come to your city. Also, click a video right here. I specifically picked two videos. Yes, that's right. Two videos specifically for you right here. So click a video right now. Get that going. And it's going to end. So click one quick. Let's go. Let's go. And have a great day.